on with us. More breaking news coming in at this point of time where U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has announced former Congressman Doug Collins of Georgia nominated as U.S. Secretary of, for Veterans Affairs. Now, Doug is currently serving U.S. as chaplain in the United States Air Force Reserve Command and fought for the country during the Iraq War. Mehndi is still on the broadcast with me. Mehndi, of course, uh, uh, you know, the Trump 2.0 cabinet is in the formation. We, of course, now have a name in front of us, Doug Collins. Um, if you could take our viewers through the details that are coming in. Well, this is probably after the presidential elections in America. Donald 2. Point, uh, Trump 2.0 government uh, is in the formation right now, and big developments are coming from there because U.S. President Donald Trump has announced the nomination of former uh, Congressman Doug Collins of Georgia to serve as the Secretary of the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs. And also talking about Collins of uh, he is a Republican who represented Georgia's ninth congressional district and is well known for his uh, conservative stance and also dedication towards the veterans issues. And also, apart from that, Asavi, throughout his tenure in Congress also, he has advocated for veteran support programs aiming to, you know, uh, improve access to health care, housing and also job opportunities for veterans. And the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, plays a very significant role in the uh, government of America also because uh, uh, within the federal government, uh, the responsibility of this department uh, has a very big role for providing health care services, benefits and also other forms of assistance uh, to military veterans also. It uh, has been confirmed that Collins will oversee a vast network of VA hospitals along with that, uh, uh, you know, the clinics and also manage the policies to address the critical needs of the uh, veteran community, including mental health services, disability benefits and also uh, support of uh, support for, uh, you know, transitioning into civilian life. And apart from that, uh, talking about uh, Trump's government and the Trump's selections of Collins, then it is representing and reflecting his administration's commitment to, uh, to you know, appointing, appointing officials who uh, aligns uh, with the priorities according to the department and also particularly uh, regarding volunteer services and support for American veterans in his government. Yes, Asabi. Absolutely. Uh, may we stay on with us. More breaking news, in fact, coming in on the same front where U.S. State Department Deputy Spokesperson Vedant Patel has commented on India-U.S. bilateral relations during Joe Biden's tenure. He's in fact said that uh, President Biden and Secretary Blinken will continue to view India as a vital partner when it comes to Indo-Pacific global regional stability. Let's in fact listen in. Um, uh, what the uh, incoming administration may or may not pursue as it relates to their uh, relationship with India. I, again, I'm going to let them speak to that. I uh, am not a spokesperson uh, for the incoming administration. Uh, President Biden and Secretary Blinken uh, continue to view uh, India as a vital partner. Uh, there are a number of areas which over the course of the past four years, you have seen tangible ways in which we have deepened that cooperation, whether that be uh, trade issues, whether that be security cooperation. Uh, India continues to be a important vital partner when it comes to the Indo-Pacific, when it comes to uh, uh, global regional stability. Uh, and uh, we are very thankful to have been able to deepen that cooperation over uh, President Biden's four years uh, in office. And look, on the topic of immigration, certainly uh, fully recognize how important this is to so many uh, people around the world, uh, whether it be uh, visitor visas, whether it be formal legal immigration channels, um, and this is something that we take incredibly seriously. Uh, and certainly, uh, as it relates to the State Department's remit on this, um, we'll continue to work and find ways in which we can improve processes. Uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, Secretary Blinken and Secretary Gina Raimondo at the Department of Commerce talked about ways in which um, they have been able to streamline processes for tourist visa processing. Uh, we recognize how vital that is to the U.S. economy, uh, and we look forward to continuing to, to, to build on that. All right, there you heard that statement over there. Meanwhile, with us on the broadcast is my colleague Mehendi. Mehendi, of course, you know, across the statements that have been made, what's being translated is the fact that the ties between India and US are, should be the strongest, especially in the 21st century. If you could take our viewers through what it is that Vedant Patel has then said. Well, yes, sorry, by the deputy spokesperson for the U.S. State Department, big statements have been made, uh, you know, uh, 
Uh, regarding uh, the strength of the US India relationship and also he noted that he could not speculate on the course uh, an incoming administration might take regarding India but he has reaffirmed that the current administration under president Joe Biden and also secretary of state Anthony Blinken uh, continues to see India as a key strategic partner and this partnership uh, with Anand Patel has also emphasized that is based on shared values and also interests that are you know fundamental uh, to both the nations and including the promotion of stability security and prosperity across the Indo Pacific region and apart from that is how with Anand Patel has also detailed the various areas in which the US and their relationship has grown significantly in recent years pointing to uh, cooperation on defense trade technology and climate action as examples of uh, this expanding uh, partnership and he noted uh, uh, that both countries have worked to strengthen defense ties also with joint military exercises and also uh, you know increase the defense technology sharing that serve to enhance the regional security of both the countries and also survey this collaboration is vital to uh, you know the shared objective of a free and open indo-pacific where international law and also uh, sovereignty are respected uh, and as far as beyond defense so vidan patel has also highlighted the economic and technological collaborations between the two countries which have uh, uh, you know become central to the relationship and also the us and india have volunteered uh, trade agreements encourage investment and focus on uh, creating resilient supply chains and moreover uh, you know uh, there has been a significant progress in high tech cooperation uh, particularly in fields like artificial intelligence cyber security and clean energy technologies and patel has also acknowledged and it is very important to note as well that the importance of people to people ties with the indian diaspora in the united states contributing uh, greatly to the cultural social and also economic fabric of the country and also you know these connections serve as a foundation for uh, deeper mutual understanding and cooperation between the two countries but you know in uh, conclusion to all this uh, vidan patel has reiterated that india continues to be a vital partner for the united states especially in promoting stability within the indo pacific region and also uh, addressing shared global challenges and the biden administration uh, remains committed to furthering this partnership appreciating uh, you know india's role as a strong reliable ally in shaping a stable secure and also a prosperous future for the region and also for the world yes sir sabhi Absolutely, Mehendi. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast and sharing all those details with us. On that note, we slip into a very short break. Thanks for watching.